Okay, we are now recording. Go ahead. Oh, Laura's frozen again. Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Laura McKay, um, Virginia CCM program manager. And I think most of us have met, if not in person, virtually. And I think most of you were on our call last week. Um, and so um, I don't know, Katie, if we really want to have everyone um, say their say hello, their name and who they're with. Should we do that real quick since there's only, well, there's 16 of us now. <laughs> I'd say let's not. Um, I do know who's on the call. Uh, I see an attendance list. So um, in the spirit of keeping up, okay. let's not. All right, great. Well, thanks everybody. We're so glad you could join us this morning. And um, Katie wanted me to just very quickly today um, mention how we got here, what we're doing. Um, uh, the CZM program has for, um, let's see, two or three rounds now of what we call our Section 309 um, Coastal Needs Assessment and Strategy. We've ranked marine debris as a high priority topic and um, chosen it as a topic to develop five-year grant strategies. And we are just now um, developing uh, the next five-year grant strategy that will run from 2021 through 2025. And that gives us funding to use the money to develop new enforceable policies with no match required. So we have a carrot and a stick there or sticking a carrot <laughs> on the way around. Um, and we've been really, really grateful to have Clean Virginia Waterways, Katie Register, um, coordinate this effort over all these years now. And um, things have really come to fruition and um, clarity about what we're doing, where we need to go. We've done a lot of work on consumer debris, our topic this morning, mainly on trying to reduce balloon releases. Um, but we also, um, uh, a few years ago, um, I guess in uh, 20, uh, I forget what year now, 29, 2009, uh, when did we develop our first marine debris reduction plan? Or was it? It started in 2013. 2014, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that state plan has gotten um, a little bit dated now. We, we're in the process of updating it as part of this effort. And we're also doing so in concert with the development of a new Mid-Atlantic Regional Marine Debris Plan. And that plan is um, going to be published um, probably in another month or so. But what we wanna do is have our updated Virginia state plan nest within that larger regional plan and be able to crosswalk between the two plans. So we're very excited about that. Um, so we're organizing our new plan according to that structure, which is, um, you may recall from our, our current state plan, it, it kind of revolved around prevention and leadership and um, kind of process, um, uh, structure is what we had. The new regional plan is really structured around marine debris sources. And so we want our plan now to follow that structure. And so that's why we have, um, we had the meeting last week. We're having the workshops this week on each of those marine debris sources. There are four consumer debris, derelict um, fishing gear, um, abandoned uh, derelict vessels and uh, microplastics, microfibers. So with that, did, is that enough there, Katie? Shall I turn it over to you at this yeah. point? Yeah, that'd be great, thank you. So today what we're gonna be doing is looking at just the consumer goal of the draft plan. Uh, this is the bottles, the cigarette butts, the balloons, the bags, the things that, that come from land, which is 60 to 80% of the trash in the ocean estimated. So what we'll be looking at and hoping that you will contribute to is helping us come up with smart um, evaluations for the actions that we're just gonna take a look at in a second. We wanna make sure that the measurements are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. And uh, we've got some drafts uh, evaluations in here, but we really want your input on that. Um, so this is the very highest level, and we did go through this last week. If any of you missed the 
uh, meeting we had last week, we spent a little time talking about the four goals that are in the new re uh, reduction plan. We also spent some time looking at successes, uh, achievements over the last six years that was recorded and you can watch that later. So we'll make sure we get a link out to everybody. It's on the Clean Virginia Waterways YouTube page. Um, so all of the goals in the plan have five strategies. The first strategy is to prevent. The second is to do more research and monitoring. Uh, the third strategy is proper disposal, interception, and infrastructure. The fourth strategy is removal. And then the last is policy and management. Now for consumers, so those strategies are the same for the four major goals. But then underneath those strategies, we've got different objectives depending on what the uh, type of debris is. For example, under um, the strategy of prevention, education and outreach, we have three objectives. And that is promote information sharing. <clears throat> and that's the, the target audience there is pretty much the public. The next objective focuses on formal and informal education. And then the third objective is focused more on industry partners. So those are the three big buckets. And in a minute, we're gonna to go to the actual draft plan and look at the individual actions underneath each of these objectives. Uh, and you see under research, we have uh, two big objectives. One is new research to identify opportunities and research gaps. And the other is to conduct social science research projects. Uh, and I'm just giving you this big overview with just a few words because when we get into the draft, there's a lot more words, but I wanted you to see the big buckets that we're looking at. Uh, strategy number three, which is proper disposal. We have just one objective and that is proper disposal and interception technologies. Um, under removal, it's cleanup, and under policy, it's pass legislation that will enable local governments to pass their own legislation in, their, uh, in the local. So this is the, the high level view. Uh, I just wanted to point out too that while Coastal Zone Management Program and Clean Virginia Waterways have done a lot over the last six years, a lot of the achievements that we went over last week in our, in our presentation were done by partners, local governments, non-government organizations, uh, all kinds of people pulling together. So this plan is not meant to be just for uh, any one entity. It's meant to be a roadmap, a guide, a, a list of priorities uh, for many, many, many partners. So now at this point, I'm going to um, share my screen. And Katie, as you're doing that, do we want to pause for a second and see if anyone has any questions so far? Is this all making sense? Yeah, any comments? I don't see any heads nodding yes or no. <laughs> we'll assume everybody's on board with us. You know, we went through that background question. really fast. I have one question in the research area, uh, Katie, and is that original research or is it plugging into and becoming aware of research that's being done nationally or globally by people like say Surfrider Foundation or somebody else? That's a great question and actually when we get down to those actions we're going to see that it's both. That this plan does suggest new research and it also suggests much more communication about existing research. Yeah. Any other comments before we dig in? Okay, well, we're a small enough group. If you need to, if you have a question, just go off of, um, turn uh, on your microphone and share. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the weeds. We're gonna start looking at the actions. Uh, a little bit about the format and you're seeing this, yes? The, um, y'all see, okay. So yeah. here again, you see the, um, the big goal, which today is consumer debris, underneath that, the strategies and the objectives, and then the actual actions. Um, this first box here under the action says factor. 
that's basically a summation of what is the problem we're trying to solve here. And uh, it's just a good um, touchstone for us to remember that that's what this action is supposed to be addressing. So for example, action 1111 that you see here, <clears throat> great, I've got allergies. Today's the day they're gonna kick in. Um, you see that the factor here is lack of outreach to the public. And so our action here is by the end of 2025, most of the actions have that language by the end of 2025. Some of them have slightly different timelines. But what we hope to do is collaborate with our Mid-Atlantic partners to create and adapt or disseminate at least five outreach projects, uh, products on consumer debris. And, that, and then it goes into detail, fact sheets, infographics, one pagers. Um, so this is the format that most of these will be taking. And then here in the next column is where we're asking for partners. And I don't know why I had that repeated. Um, here's where we're asking for partners. If your organization, your state agency, your local agency, your nonprofit is interested in contributing to this, many of you are already doing these things, then this is the opportunity um, to add your name. You can go into this Google Doc, I, I've sent you all the link, and you can use the comment function to type in the name of your organization if this is something that you can be a partner on. Uh, some, we understand that some groups are gonna have to get permission or they're gonna have to talk to higher ups uh, before they can commit. Um, and actually we have a, a, our we have a little poll here. I'm wondering, does this apply to you? Do you need to talk to others in your organization before you can sign up as a partner on some of these actions? So please take a, a few seconds to vote. Yes, no, or I better, which is also yes. <laughs> Hi, Katie. It's Emily from uh, Fairfax County. Um, as far as a partner goes, would that just be adding stuff to our social media pages and stuff like that or contributing to help um, make the material? I'd say it's all of the above. Okay. Some people in this partnering on Action 1111 will be creating and others will be disseminating the information. Okay. Yeah. I think Fairfax will be able to definitely help out. Great, great. Well, I'm glad you're here today. Um, so uh, as you see, it's uh, kind of half and half. Uh, a little bit more of the people said yes, if you add the I better with the yeses. Um, so we do understand that and it's fine. You can go to the Google Doc and you can type in, I believe my organization XYZ can be a partner but I'm pending, you know, pending approval. Um, that's fine. Go ahead and put that in so that we know to follow up with you later to see if in fact you have um, the permission to sign up as a partner. And then this is where uh, I'd like us all to have some discussion. The metrics, how are we gonna measure success on action 1111 which is about collaborating to adapt and disseminate outreach products. Um, I suggested that the action performance metric is increased engagement in the public in preventing litter. How will we measure that is another question. Um, probably not for today because we don't have, uh, we've got quite a few actions to go through. Um, but I, I thought that this might be a better metric rather than <clears throat> something like, let's hand out 200 copies of, of our outreach materials. Um, rather than measure output in terms of paper or people we're talking to, I wanted to see if we could measure engagement. So I'll be quiet here and have you all react. Uh, oh, one other point I should talk about on this some of these actions, as you see there in the aqua at the bottom of, uh, I'm trying to highlight it right there, many of these actions are either from or adapted from the Mid-Atlantic plan or they've been updated from the Virginia plan. 
And when they are in the mid-Atlantic plan, I brought over the partners that already signed up on the mid-Atlantic plan. So for example, Public Works Department, Prince William County signed up on the mid-Atlantic plan to be a partner on an action that is basically the same as this action. So I brought those over thinking um, it would be a starting point. Okay, so now I'm gonna be quiet and get your reaction to the format and the, uh, is this the best action performance metric that we could use? Hey Katie, can you hear me? Hi, uh, yeah. Mark, Mark Slingle, Virginia Aquarium. So I have a couple questions. Um, one is, um, uh, because I'm not sure, I, I glanced over this before the call, but I didn't look at it in great detail. So I may not, I may have missed something. So my first question is, when I read this, the outreach is all like a product that we're distributing, it sounds like, uh, the way it's described here. Um, and I'm wondering if something like an exhibit and or a you know, public exhibit and or display would also qualify as outreach. Um, and, and I wonder if that would be something, again, I'm not, if, if that's somewhere else, my apologies, I may have missed it, but if it's not, I wonder if that's something else we might put here, because I feel like there might may be a place for that. Um, my second question like is- the answer is yes. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I just Katie's added it. <laughs> my, my second question, it relates to the metrics, and I think I'm in total agreement with your metric that you suggested, but I also think because a lot of this may happen in social media platforms, I do think I do think some level of of understanding of how many people have at least opened a document or looked at a document. I'm not an expert by a long shot in this area, but I know there are ways to determine when you send things out how many you know how many people open it, look at it, things like that. And I realize that's not where we need to get in the end, but it, but it is an interim step about how effective your outreach materials may be. And I believe you, somebody else can be a lot more eloquent about that issue than I can, but just thought that probably you need both. Excellent. Great point, thank you. I think Google Analytics We'll let you do that. We, I think on a number of most people's websites, they're always looking at the analytics to see how many hits they've gotten on different pages or whatever. So that should be pretty doable as a metric. Right. And face one metric under that action. Right. Okay, other thoughts or comments? I know we're spending more time on this first one. We'll, we'll probably get faster as we go along. Any other thoughts? Okay, and, and as we pointed out in our email to you, this is not the only chance that you're gonna have. Um, we're gonna encourage your continued input for the next few weeks on this document. Hi, Hi Katie, it's Megan Quinn. Sorry, I, it took me a second to unmute myself. I had a question. If there'd be any, if there was any um, consideration around making, like sharing the, product I mean not all of them obviously if it was an well I guess an exhibit could travel as well but um for some groups it might be beneficial if it was branded in their own materials so if we could share kind of the backbone and the information that went into some of the um the outreach that was developed is I when and there are other states that have tourism programs and when we work with Virginia Green tourism program in Virginia. And I was like, you know, if another state has something similar, sometimes they're willing to share it. Sometimes we can just look at it, but I just, I feel like, like those structures already there. And I would love for other people to just, you know, not have to recreate it, but if it's beneficial to their program to use it in a branded way, um, I think that could be helpful. You're saying allow um, other organizations to adapt and put it out under their own name? Is that what you mean by branding? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I that would be like what Plan RVA has done with their um, campaign. That's all um, downloadable and you can add your own logo and adapt it if you want. So yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea, Megan, to 
Yeah. Think that way about everything we do. We might actually have that captured on another action, but I made a note here to make sure that it's somewhere. So excellent. Yeah, it's like a toolkit, right? Like the, you know, the toolkits that get sent out with the, with the information and then you can repurpose and rebrand it and put the information that makes right. it easy, makes it easy for you to do that. Yeah, that's you what we're trying to do with the yeah. balloon release reduction social marketing campaign too. It's a toolkit. So other organizations can take what works for them in their situation and, and adapt it. Great. Yeah, and, and actually, but we'll have to track that, you know, in order to make sure, you know, we're we're capturing, you know, how those toolkits have been um, adapted and used and disseminated. So it'll be it'll be tricky to stay on top of. Well, and the, and the other side of that great. coin, uh, the Virginia Coastal Alliance and Lynn Haven River now, uh, without pride of authorship, are happy just to share other people's products. So we we have in our social media and websites. We have direct links to everything that Oceana and Surfrider and everybody else who has some fantastic products, uh, they, they just link straight to those so there's no rework required. And hi everyone, this is Sarah from Ocean Conservancy. Just to chime in here, um, especially with tracking all of this, I've been involved in some other um, kind of bigger, like some of the other NOAA regional action plans along with the Mid-Atlantic one. And it is really nice, the structure of having the partners who I kind of view as just anyone contributing to the action. And then the lead is usually the organization or the individual who kind of keeps that group moving and together. And I, the, the actions that I've participated in a lot of times the lead will start an email group or some sort of way to keep that specific action contributors together and aligned. And then a lot of the contributors will either report to the lead or like there's a few different ways that they do it, but it is kind of a nice system that there's at least one point person or organization um, to help keep track of that action in particular. It's, it's worked pretty nicely um, from my experience. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. All right, other thoughts on this? This is great. This is exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> um, this is Corey from NVRC. Um, I just wanted to add one more point of view. Um, when creating public outreach products, um, sometimes you do research beforehand on your target audience to understand you know, what what messages may resonate with them and, and what are the barriers and benefits of, of them, you know, of what you're trying to promote. Um, so maybe there's um, information about um, specific products uh, that, that are frequently littered like water bottles or balloons or certain things like that. And we could um, share the target audience kind of demographics and um, and so that we can perhaps more create more targeted materials instead of something just very broad. That sounds great, Corey. So you're talking about maybe like, um, you know, if you've done some work with focus groups to see what the barriers are to behavior change, to share right. those results too, as background before preparing the messages. Yeah, that I think that's a great point. Thank you. And we'll get into that a little bit in the next action too, I think, right, Katie? Right, right. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep moving, but keep interrupting. <laughs> if you're not interrupting, keep contributing. So the next action, 1112, is fostering collaboration, coordination, cooperation amongst all the groups that are working on this. So the factor is the lack of coordination and communication and the proposed measurement uh, performance metric will be increased collaboration in prevention of litter and marine debris coming from consumer items. So thoughts on this one. Corey from NVRC again, I'm happy to, you know, be a partner or a lead on at least fostering coordination among local governments in the Northern Virginia region. Okay. Do, you know, a workshop or something, something like that. Thank you. 
have to forgive my typing. <laughs> All right, great. Any other thoughts on this one? I mean, this specifically mentions the uh, Virginia Plastic Pollution Prevention Network, um, which is was founded by Coastal Zone Management Program, Clean Virginia Waterways, and Ecomaniac. So um, I believe all three of those will be listed as a partner uh, on this and perhaps a lead in some ways. But uh, Corey, you bring up a good point that um, there could be different leads, you know, a lead that's focusing on local governments, a lead that's focusing on schools, things like that. So yeah, it's, we can be flexible. Other thoughts or comments on this one? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Action 1113, the factor is lack of communication about projects, practices, and research. Uh, this comes to Jim's question. Um, maintain and expand the inventory of litter prevention projects, best management practices, social marketing campaigns, and research. So this is building awareness on other people's research. Um, and the actual performance metric would be increasing the knowledge about other practices and projects and research. Any thoughts on here? On this one. Hi, Katie. Yeah, I it's think Christy we all Kehoe. just need Go it's ahead. Christy Keogh with the Marine Debris Program. I would be happy to help partner and share resources on the collaboration portal or within my network. So um, if you'd like to sign me up as a partner, I'd be happy to. Okay, that was Christy? Yes, Christy Kehoe with the Marine Debris Program. I think Ocean Conservancy morning, can Christy. be a contributor to this one too, Katie, just since we're kind of already connecting these dots and especially as we develop more of the trash trapping device network, anything that happens within the state would be happy to, to share that here perhaps, or any other action that you think is more fitting. All right, so I've got Noah, Marine Debris. Katie, somewhere we need to, somewhere we need to uh, make sure people know who to contact to add projects to the collaborative portal. Um, I'm not sure if, if everyone's understanding that, but that, you know, we already have that Mid-Atlantic portal and, um, you know, we can put all of our Virginia projects on it and should. Um, and so right now, I think Katie, is it just you and Virginia Whitmer that have the passwords to add projects for Virginia? Right. So, again, that's a good point. so I just wanna make sure people are aware of that. Yeah, I think this um, this action is also a really an area where it's a good example of the need for periodically having like a conference or, or a meeting because you know just listing projects on a portal somewhere you know is is great and you want those resources available when you need to find them but the way that that this information is often best shared at least traditionally at least was. When we when everybody got together and got to see what other people were doing and, and see it. so I just throw that in there I don't know if, if that fits anywhere else but that's I think especially in this one it um, it's, a, it's a good reason to plan you know a marine debris meeting or conference or something annually or every other year or something within within our five year time frame. Great. Yeah, and we do have that. Um... Right now, we have um, funding in the Virginia CZM uh, grant to host a Mid-Atlantic Summit. And we've already set the dates for that. Um, it'll be, uh, I gotta find it in my calendar. It's July um, 20th through the 22nd, and it will be virtual. And so uh, we should probably give an assignment to people coming to that virtual summit to um, you know create a list of everything they're working on so that that could be um, compiled and shared and um, that might make it easier to get some of those projects into the collaborative portal as well but you know real time during that summit 
you know, have that um, document together to be shared with everyone. So um, that'd be great. And then in the um, five year section 309 marine debris strategy that um, we'll be funding um, Clean Virginia Waterways Katie to work on, we have budgeted in there summits, um, not every year, but um, I think we've got one in there. I don't know if I'll remember, Katie, is it 23 and 25? March of 2022, probably in Norfolk, and then one in 2025. So basically every three years. Yeah. Uh, great. So I added um, webinars, workshops, summits, meetings. Yeah. I just read an article today about how uh, people are really missing the in-person um, aspect of sharing instead of always on Zoom. So yeah, that's great. Uh, any other comments? Zoom fatigue. <laughs> yeah, Zoom fatigue, right. Hey, Katie from Long Ranch, Christina. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, you sound very far away. Okay, I'm trying my headset here because uh, Andy Jacks are here tonight. Um, <laughs> Anyway, for the Mid-Atlantic Marine Debris Collaboration Portal, is that a public website that anyone can look at? It is. Okay. I'm just curious, like, as far as you know, that will work with the uh, Virginia Plastic Pollution Prevention Network um, and getting word out to not only partners, but to the public about different projects and volunteer opportunities that are happening in the, in the state. Yeah, I think work together somehow. That's probably too much of the leads for this conversation, but just wanted to make sure we talk about that at some point. About increased sharing of resources and opportunities? Is that what well, you're saying? Just uh, I'm curious how the Mid Atlantic Marine Debris Collaboration Portal will, will work with the Plastic Pollution Prevention Network um, so that they're all talking to each other. So that if something goes into the portal that could be shared throughout Virginia, you know, is the network the best outlet for that? Okay. That's a, a good question that we should uh, talk about the nexus of those two. I'll just make a random note here. Um, okay. Any other comments, thoughts? Go on to the next one then. Uh, 1114, we're still, remember the objective is um, prevention, education, and outreach. That's our strategy and our objective is promoting information sharing and support outreach. So we are now on um, 1114. By the end of 2025, engage at least 800 residents in meaningful interactions about the reduction of common consumer debris items. Um, this is actually from the Virginia or from the Mid-Atlantic plan. We had many partners sign up to partners who live in Virginia. Um, some people have mentioned during our earlier discussions and interviews that this is very uh, vague and could we make it more specific? I mean, meaningful interactions is, is open to interpretation. So the question is, can we make it more specific? Uh, for example, can we call for wider implementation of an existing program or a campaign, or do we wanna focus this? I do wanna point out that we should look at the next action in conjunction with this question. The next action, 1115, says support outreach, advocacy and development and implementation of social marketing campaigns that are targeted, balloons, single use plastic bags, it's, et cetera. Um, again, a number of, of entities signed up on the Mid-Atlantic action to work on that. So let's go back to 1114 and gather your input on uh, that, really that term, meaningful interactions and then what would be an action performance metric. Or is it so vague we should take it out? Except we have partners who signed up. <laughs> it's 
if we're thinking of more than just going beyond number of views or number of like eyes that have seen something, um, we've had some success here and there with having surveys, like pre and post surveys of a particular kind of program or outreach campaign that we've shared. Um, of course, getting those results back can be a challenge, but I wonder if there's some sort of way that there can be more of a two-way street, I think to Mark's point earlier. Um, and maybe in a metric is because we're all virtual, maybe it is like if you engage with a classroom <laughs> and, and you have that actual, that meaningful time with them, does that count? I'm, I'm not sure. There's so many different ways now that, that we could measure that. Yeah, I think 8,000 is a red herring. Uh, <clears throat> for example, we, uh, Lynn Haven River now engages every school student on plastic de marine debris uh, every year in, in, in fourth graders or whatever they are, you know. So uh, what's a citizen? <laughs> what's a resident? You know, we, uh, we, engage, uh, we engage every student in Virginia Beach on this topic every year. Right. Yeah. And in Virginia, uh, the International Coastal Cleanup usually has 6,000 to 8,000 volunteers doing river cleanups and beach cleanups. Is that meaningful interaction? Um, and that's every year. So, yeah, I agree. That number, what does that mean? And it seems rather low if you're going to count a lot of the programs we already have in place. I think, um, I think one of the issues here is which we've all said is defining a meaningful interaction. So, you know, is it a, is it something other than just handing something out? I mean, I think we would probably all agree that it probably is, but, um, uh, but, and there's a lot of work right now going on on how to better measure the impact of your, of your actions on the behavior change of your audience. And, it's not easy, but there's a lot of things starting to happen on that front. So uh, that's the that's one of the challenges here. I, um, I mean, is I mean, I'm asking out of uh, ignorance of the total of what's totally in here. It is is our cleanups a separate in a separate place? They are. Yes. Okay, so that so that probably wouldn't be the meaningful interaction that we're talking about here. Then probably yeah. would be some other some other things, which is good. We just have to be better about defining what they are. Uh, this is Virginia Whitmer with Virginia CCM program. I actually think this action is more of uh, a way to um, is a measure uh, and evaluate a program rather than being a discrete action. So are you suggesting, should this be modified to say um, interactions about source reduction of common consumer debris items should be measured in a meaningful way or you know, shift it to more of a measurement? Well, I, I, when you talk about the definition of meaningful interaction, I immediately think at this point, having done a lot of social marketing work, I think of behavior. So that really is a measurement of, of, a, um, of a strategy or a campaign, you know, so. Behavior influence is what we're going for, not the fact that they got talked to. Or, um. Hey, this is Christina. Um, can you hear me better now? I think I figured out what my problem was. Much better. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so as a business that provides alternatives to single-use plastics, um, this is kind of interesting because every time a customer buys a reusable shopping bag or, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that, does that each one of those count as one or, you know, like I could, I could tell you every time a light bulb goes off. And so you have people that are already doing the right thing. And then you have people that learn when they come to my table. Um, so I think, uh, and I think you just touched on that where behavior is influence when you give people the ideas and they act on it. Um, not just learning, you know, and saying, Oh, I'm going to try that someday. I don't know. That's my two cents. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's great, Christina, because, well, clearly you hope that when somebody buys that, um, some of those, you know, the straw kits, the reusable forks, that kind of thing, or utensils, that they're going to, they're using it. And I, I think it alludes to a behavior, um, certainly. You know what I'd like to propose? I think this is a, a great conversation and will probably take some time. I'd like to propose that a small group, including um, the aquarium, uh, Prince William, uh, both in Prince William, keep Prince William beautiful, as well as the public works uh, and clean Virginia waterways. A couple of us talked about this offline and see how we can make this um, more measurable and meatier. Does that sound good to everybody? Anyone can contribute to that conversation. I just wanted to make sure we got these partners who had signed up. Yeah, Jim, you're on mute. Well, you can add Lynn Haven River now to that discussion. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to contribute to this conversation? Sarah, would you be able to from Ocean Conservancy? <laughs> yeah, as me. That sounds good. Thanks, Katie. Okay, and then we'll get Ecomaniac. Uh, when we have that conversation, we'll let everyone know. So anyone else who wants to jump in, but um, I think that's, there's something there that we don't want to throw out, but it's not well defined. Okay. So let's move on to the next one, 1115. Um, support outreach, advocacy, and development and implementation of social marketing campaigns to reduce marine debris from individual items like balloons, cigarette butts. Um, we definitely have some partners already listed. And I suggested the performance metric would be measurable decrease in litter from those specific sources. Thoughts or comments? Okay. Katie, I'm yes. sorry, waiting for others to comment before I jump in again. Um, I would be a little bit clearer that this is a very, very specific um, uh, tool, uh, social marketing. So I would remove reference to outreach and to advocacy and put design, development, and implementation. Okay. That is an um, and then, and then up at the at the top under the strategy or action item, um, we want to then put up there uh, social marketing for be you know because we have outreach education, um, but up here right at at the objective we actually don't. We have leading to long-term changes in behavior because obviously awareness is, 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 a, is a really important stage. But when it comes to behavior, actual behavior change, I think you need to do a little bit more of an investment like with um, social marketing. So it's very discreet. Yeah, great, great uh, point. I did highlight support outreach and advocacy uh, to make sure that they, that they are somewhere. Um, so, mm -hmm. Right. So development and implementation, but you said add research. Yeah, or uh, well, research, design. Okay. Um, and uh, because I think that in terms of terminology, it's really important to make sure that everybody under, you know, is on the same page about how those are defined and how we use them, the, those terms. Perfect, thank you. Any other comments on this one, which is now more narrowly focused on social marketing? But again, we'll make sure supporting outreach and advocacy shows up somewhere. Okay, excellent. Um, by the way, we have 45 minutes left and a lot to go. So uh, I'm gonna suggest that if you need a, a quick little break, take a quick little break, but we're gonna keep moving on. And we, did, we are recording this, so you can always uh, watch it later if you miss something. Okay, item 1116. Um, the partners will promote sustainable and waste reduction initiatives in their own spaces, whether it's an office, school, or institution. Basically, walk the walk. Uh, we had um, Prince William County Public Works sign up on this action in the Mid-Atlantic. 
plan. And I suggested the metric would be a decrease in the use of single use items among the partners of this plan. Any thoughts on that? Some of these- I seem would ask um, Meg Megan Quinn um, at DEQ. I know, I mean, we already have a lot of kind of programs in place. Is this something that, that you or maybe it's um, Morgan at DEQ could kind of commit to and track the reduction? Is Megan still there? Maybe on mute? I'm here. I, I was muted on both my phone and computer, sorry. Um, yeah, my question would be like, how, how do we track that? Is that something that we certainly have a lot of programs at DEQ that were um, either outreach programs through Virginia Green and Veep to try and get um, other people to do that as well as our own environmental management system. Um, but are we gonna be tracking or purchasing? Are we gonna be like, wh what metric are we looking for there to show that there's a reduction? Well, That's something that we always struggle with. Cause I mean, we, you know, you can track, I mean, for, especially for DEQ, that's not necessarily, you know, we don't have a dining hall or right. You know, we're not giving out plastic bags. How do we, sh so some of the stuff that's coming into us, um, and just thinking of like the work that we had done to make sure that what gets recycled in our recycling cans in our own buildings is actually materials that is recyclable. Um, you know, a lot of that isn't stuff that DEQ is providing. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. Would it be small things like through, um, and I'd probably have to track it through procurement, but I mean, even things like, although maybe we've already converted, are we still buying things for when we used to have meetings and hopefully will again for coffee mm -hmm. or whatever? Um, I, you know, I'm not sure, but um, if we're buying any plastic um, or, you know, things that we're doing, you know, to encourage people to say, bring their own water bottles mm -hmm. um, to meetings, that sort of thing. Yeah. And that's like, we've done outreach events through the EMS team where we provided the reusable plates and the reusable silverware and um, water cups and encourage people right. to bring those to all of the events that were happening. Um, Yeah. So I, I, I think there's a space for us here. I just, I'm, I'm when usually when we look at metrics, it's you know, what comes in and what goes out, but it's a little harder to track that when it's individual people bringing in the material sometimes. And I don't think that means that we shouldn't look at it. It's definitely something we should look at it. I just, I think it's something that's a little more difficult to measure. And it's not like in our building, we can't, we don't get numbers on the, the actual waste. So like we can't separate our stuff out from other tenants in the building. Well, yeah, that's a, a good conversation on how do we measure some of these. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I made a few notes as we were talking, Megan, you know, if, is there a policy in place that pictures of water are gonna be on the table, not single use plastic bottles? Um, do every single communication, you know, every agenda that says, when you come to this meeting, bring your own coffee mug or things mm -hmm. like that. So um, yeah, I think sometimes the measurement's gonna depend on where you are. Schools might be easier to measure than some businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe that's a good point. Maybe it's having how many, we measure how many people have that policy in place instead of mm -hmm. the, the waste part. Yeah. Yeah, where uh, you wanted to say something, Jen? Yeah, actually, I was just gonna. I was just about to say what Megan said that maybe instead of measuring how many people are bringing their own cup to a, a meeting, we measure how many meetings have a policy that you bring your own cup because I think the other is impossible, and the measuring policies and encouraging those policies uh, by making that a goal um, is yeah. is something that you can count. 
Yeah, and I the other side of it on oh, that. Oh. No, go ahead. Oh, this is Corey from NVRC. I was just going to agree with, with what you said and what, what Jen said is, um, you know, at, at our office, back when we used to have meetings, we'd have, you know, tons of meetings every single day. And um, we made, we made a, a switch to, re, you know, all reusable items, and, you know, single waste or single use plastics and, you know, and instead of measuring how many people do that, we could simply just say, you know, out of the 300 meetings we hosted last year, for approximately, you know, 5,000 people, we incur we had this policy. So that might be a better way to me measure it. Good. Um, just uh, real quickly, this is Virginia. Um, this is a really great place to put to emphasize the leading by example. And I started to envision something that is very, um, you, you know, you can count, um, but that's a, a pledge by every member of the participating um, organizations, partners signed that pledge to do certain things. You know, for example, bringing um, a coffee mug or, you know, any other kind of reusable item to meetings and then, uh, uh, set, you know, sh you know, again, I'm sorry, uh, uh, be an example, um, but maybe also, you know, maybe they can wear a really a little pin that says, ask me why I have my coffee, you know, re reusable mug with me today or something like that. Um, I think that could be a, you know, then you're, you're taking it from not just the policy they have in place, but then the specifically by example and then measurable um, impact to some degree. Getting that social diffusion message out there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Great. I think that's great. Social diffusion. Any other thoughts on this one before we move on? These are great thoughts. All right. Katie, this one sounds like it's really reshaped pretty nicely in a doable way. So I think that was great conversation. Yeah, this is great input. Um, and some of these actions are going to be much easier and low hanging fruit compared to others. <clears throat> All right, so we are still in the prevention. This is, by the way, the biggest chunk of the updated plan is the consumer debris. <laughs> so I, I appreciate all your continued efforts here. So the next, next objective is to educate youth and adults formal and non-formal education. Action 1121 is to share educational materials that are already out there. Uh, like the Ocean Conservancy has great lesson plans on, on tr talking trash. Uh, NOAA has them. I'm, a lot of our organizations have them, but share those um, through online platforms, in-person events, educator workshops, school visits, field trips. And I don't yet have a um, suggested action performance metric here, and we don't yet have partners listed. So at this point, um, Please share what you're thinking. Katie, we can partner on this for sure. I think the challenge that I face with, with this is, at least in my um, spot at OC, I'm one step removed from a lot of the on the ground work. So it might be tougher for me to get metrics beyond just dissemination, but I can do my best um, to stay in touch with those educators or those people that I do send it to within the state and then try to get some more engagement or meaningful metrics back. But yeah, please at least add us as a contributor through the Talking Trash curriculum. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Katie, uh, it's Emily again. I think most of the MS4 programs, at least the phase ones would fall into this category of partners because we are required to put out litter prevention messaging. And is that uh, formal? So this particular action, 1121, um, well, it's sharing educational materials. Yeah, so we're required, I mean, ultimately it's a behavioral change, but really any litter prevention messaging that goes out there, we count it as litter prevention. Okay, excellent. 
So the action performance metric, um, you know, the easy one is how many uh, times did we share educational materials, but that's not behavior change. Um, what should we suggest here? One could be uh, how many educators are using. I mean, it's still not behavior change, but at least they've adopted. They just didn't receive, but they've adopted the use of these materials. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, anybody? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Any other partners want to sign up on this one? At this point, I will tell you too. Oh, go ahead, Emily. Actually, Katie, this is Virginia. I think we should make a note to approach the Virginia Association of Environmental Education about this one. Okay. I'm sorry, did you say VAST or? Um, V-A-E-E. -E. Ah. And maybe VAST, which is Virginia uh, Association of Science Teachers. Right, yeah. Okay. All right, good. I, I wanted to point out too that about a month from now when this plan has gelled more and people have had more time to sign up as partners or as leads, any of the actions in this plan that do not have a partner, nobody uh, is able at this point to put resources into that particular action, all of those actions will be moved to a wish list. We're calling it future actions. So it will be in the publication with the plan, but it's going to be removed into, uh, you know, maybe later. Um, so I just want to point that out. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. Uh, action 1122. Each year, share professional opportunities, internships, upcoming workshop, professional de development with high school and universities. Um, this is from the Virginia or the Mid-Atlantic plan. Any comments on this? I so Fairfax, we have Operation Stream Shield, which helps um, folks who are experiencing homelessness obtain some skill sets in either removing debris or non-native plant. Um, removal and some other specialized projects as well. So maybe not constraining it to just educational, um, like the academia arenas, maybe it could also include adult education too. Okay, that would be appropriate under this because we do say non-formal education. Um, so share professional opportunities, um, what, what should we put here? Share educational, comma. Uh, workforce, maybe. Okay. Or like educational trainings, maybe. Ah, training. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from education because we've got yeah. that, that one, but I like that. Training is different than education, okay. Workforce training and professional opportunities. Does that meet your goal, Emily, or do we need to wordsmith that a bit? No, that sounds great. I'm glad everyone else was able to think on their toes. I was not. <laughs> and then the action metrics would be, um, I guess, what? Partners who offer the workforce training and professional opportunities feel like their uh, opportunities are being um, spread more or does that make sense as a metric? Katie, are we envisioning these are opportunities that are available just for Virginians or is it something that would, okay, so we wouldn't like a nationwide, you know, professional training wouldn't count for this or? Well, that's a good point. Um, this is Virginia specific. However, on a couple of the actions, we have the words work with the Mid-Atlantic partners to do something. Um, I would think though that 
there's already some platforms that do share professional opportunities and workshops that are worldwide. So uh, maybe we share those resources. Like if you really want to know more about jobs in marine debris, go to the marine debris blog that already exists. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that's helpful. Is this to be sorry, a good place Virginia, to put out in, um, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, justice in those job opportunities? Um, something that we're trying to integrate into everything we do, but um, in particular, um, job opportunities, I think, would be a really good place to add this emphasis. Okay. We've just been calling it DEIJ, although I loved what somebody else kind of reversed the letters in that acronym to JEDI, <laughs> which is so great. Oh, Justice, yeah. equity, diversity, inclusion. <laughs> Justice, say that again. Uh, well, people seem to be calling it DEIJ, okay. diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. Okay, but we're going to go with the Jedi. That's cool. <laughs> if we want to call it Jedi, I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Any other thoughts on this? Katie, this is Virginia. In terms of uh, measurement, um, and and this just might be harder than I was than than is good. anyway. I'm sorry. This might be hard, but I was thinking about referrals in some way tracking referrals when we're talking about use of existing programs or materials. How that could how that could be tracked and 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 again um, thinking about you know whether that could be done through referral, but that might all might not always be consistent. Or known, I don't know. All right, any other thoughts on that one? These are great points. I hope I'm capturing them all. All right, let's move on to the next objective because we still have research and <laughs> proper disposal and removal and policy and management to get through. But this is the biggest chunk that we're working our way through now. Um, Okay, so the next objective is industry partnerships. Uh, uh, Action 1131 focuses on engaging food service, travel, and tourism industries. Uh, I do have a, a conversation later this week with Tom Griffin, who runs the uh, Virginia Green Project, which focuses on this industry. Um, are there any thoughts that we want to add here before that conversation with Tom. Okay. The next under this industry partnership objective is support systemic waste source reduction, including investigations of reusable biodegradable alternative packaging and innovative product design. One of the questions that came up in a previous conversation is, is this particular action appropriate on the Virginia level? Um, is this something that Virginia, a, a Virginia partner can take on? Um, one person suggested, no, we should omit this. But then another person I talked to said, keeping these broad goals in a plan are a good idea if somebody in Virginia does want to do research on these projects, it's in the plan that they can refer to. We also could move it to the future projects list. So any discussion here? Hey, it's Christina. Um, I think with this new uh, polystyrene ban in Virginia, we are going to have to take this on. Um, I know I've said this before, but I, you know, we can't just create this law and wipe our hands, say, yay, go restaurants. Um, so I feel like this would probably at some level stay in. Um, I don't know who, it's a, it's a huge project to try to, you know, find these affordable, sustainable alternatives. Um, but certainly I think we should keep it on our, our radar. Okay. 
But would this be a different action? Sorry, this is Virginia. This is support um, research. But in terms of, you know, as Christina just pointed out, and a really great point, Christina, that now we have, um, you know, this legislation, we have this um, ban. Do we need to, is there something more we can do to work with industry to, um, um, to apply this and, 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 and measure rather than, because it's, it's different from research, it's, it's actually moving forward on on implementation. So is there something that we could do specifically to help support this or get the word out? Um, yeah. That I would say is a totally different action related. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I did hear about one organization that bought in bulk so they could get economies of scale and then sell to smaller businesses, you know, who couldn't buy 10,000 of something. Um, but right. that, that was quite a big option. Yeah. Okay. So that might be a different action. When does the ban go into effect? Do you know, Christina? For uh, larger chain restaurants, I believe it's 2023. And then for the small businesses, it's 2025. So it really is kind of good timing with this plan. Um, but yeah, that's gonna come around pretty quickly. And since school yeah. and governments also are not exempt, that's the latest I've heard. Is that right, Mark and Christina? That's correct, that's correct. So yep. that's gonna drive a lot more purchasing um, when you know think of every school not using polystyrene. Yeah. All right, so this might be a really- So maybe it's, uh, you know, Oops, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say maybe it's a fact sheet or something else that you know is is a collection of tips or um, techniques or resources for the um, you know the businesses or the schools or the organizations that have to you know that that are going to be um, need to look at this abide by this ban. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have to comply. And that, that's the supportive kind of role. And that might be more smart. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, some of that work's already been done. Uh, I know Surfrider has a, I think it's Surfrider has a, um, a, a, a worksheet on this topic that, um, mm. that shows, that shows um, alternative um, sources for packaging. Mm -hmm. Mark, who's our yeah, local surf rider person now? Uh, you know? This is Jim Depia. I know it's uh, Matt Gove, and he's not local. He's mid-Atlantic, mm -hmm. but there's no surf rider Virginia person who's in the lead on this. Um, but Matt okay. is the go-to guy, and he plays in all of our plastics groups in Virginia. Yeah. And Matt Gove is on our mid-Atlantic marine debris work group. Um, yeah. Although he hasn't been able to make the meetings lately, but I know Matt pretty well from Mid-Atlantic Ocean work. So this is, sounds like a good one that we should coordinate with him, you know, and, and maybe ask him, Katie, what, what can we do in Virginia to help um, move this along and make sure all of the schools and businesses are aware of, of the new law. Katie, I think that one, one thing that I think having bit worked with Surfrider on this topic, this is really important to keep on the list because this creates a demand signal from the, from the school systems, the government entities and on the NGOs uh, to the industry to come up with solutions. And without that demand, demand, demand signal from the grassroots level, nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I had, and I, I had to step out for a second, and um, and so if I miss this, you can tell me to wait, <laughs> and I'll, I'll watch it later. Um, one of the things that is interesting to me about this is that um, uh, obviously this new polystyrene ban is going to make, going to have significant impact over time. You know, over the next four or five years. Um, one of the things that may happen from this is that some of these alternative uh, uh, products that will be used to replace this will often be um, hopefully compostable. 
So, uh, you know, that might be one of the alternatives. And I don't know how aware everyone on the call is, but I know this is indirectly linked to marine debris, but we have very little commercial um, composting facilities in the state. And that lack of facilities is one of the big holdups to people switching to more environmentally friendly products because they have no, they, there's no place to take it. And, it. and it has to be composted in an industrial facility, not in your backyard kind of compost thing. So that's a significant issue in, in the state. And I don't know if it's in the, within the, certainly may not be within the purview of this particular plan, other than in the policy arena maybe, but um, that's a huge drawback to some people changing things because the reality is if you change to this like compostable tableware, for example, but you have no access to a commercial composting facility, then it ends up exactly the same in a landfill somewhere. And that's it lasts a long time. I want to piggyback on that, Mark, because that's a big deal with Surfrider Foundation. A lot of uh, <clears throat> distributors are selling, are, are selling the notion of bioplastics as a compostable alternative and uh, a bioplastic behaves exactly like a, a regular plastic in the marine environment, never breaks down, et cetera. So <clears throat> the, comp the compostable line is a double-edged sword, you know, uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a heavily used word by the vendor, vendor community in selling their, their wares to unsuspecting uh, restaurateurs. Yeah, and I think, um, and, and I think the other side of that too is it not just the biocompostable plastics, but just the alternatives to both plastics and polystyrene. You know, they're 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 often compostable alternatives. But if you don't have composting available to you, then you sort of uh, you don't have. And, and it, for one thing, there's a lot of reasons, but that's another reason why. Uh, uh, organizations and businesses are less likely to accept the stuff because if they actually look at it and follow the chain, they realize that, yeah, it, on, on the surface, it could be better, but not without the, the, um, the background resources that you need. Okay, so I just posted a, a poll, if you all could vote it. Do you think it is appropriate that the Virginia Marine Debris Reduction Plan call for promotion of uh, you know, removing barriers so that we get more professional composting facilities. Is that appropriate for this plan? Okay, please vote. All right, we got 100% yes. So, um, can I just make a quick comment before we move on or if we're getting ready to move on? We actually had this conversation with our green committee um, to the resort advisory commission um, just a few days ago about what the city of Virginia Beach is thinking as far as composting. And of course it all comes down to money and staff, um, but they have been floating the idea for quite some time. Um, so I certainly think supporting the idea of composting and, and you know, the less expensive alternatives from foam to something else is going to be just regular old plastic, um, which, you know, can't be recycled right now, as far as I know, or nobody's actually, it could be recycled, no one's doing it. Um, the other comment I wanted to make is, um, Katie, I think I sent you the link to this company or a nonprofit organization um, not too long ago, but there's a organization called Upstream and they promote reusable to-go containers. Um, and there's several organizations, especially out in the West Coast, that's doing this, where you get your to-go food in a stainless steel container, and they have deposit areas where you can return it, um, or it gets picked up, depending on the situation. Um, but I think those programs and businesses are worthy of being supported as well. So I, I just made a note. Um, I've volunteered Jim, Mark, Christine, and myself to collaborate on writing a, uh, this new action. Anybody else want to um, be part of that conversation? You'll all get a chance to review what we write. Are you get, okay with that, Jim and Mark and Christina? <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else want to contribute to that? Okay, all right, go ahead. More green jobs. That's oh my God. the way we market it. Katie, I have a quick suggestion re related to this and I'm popping it in the chat in the interest of time. <laughs> okay, good, yes. 
you know what? I'm so glad you said that. Everyone use the chat box. Uh, even if we can't go through them today, it's, that's a great way to contribute. Okay. So um, the next is we're into research and monitoring. Uh, the objective is new research to identify opportunities, research gaps and data collection. There's only um, three actions under this objective. One action is to work with the Mid-Atlantic to compile existing consumer debris research. The next one is promote consumer debris research, um, citizen science, data collection, monitoring surveys and such. And then the last one looks at ecological and economic impacts. I just wanted to give you the big picture there. So let's go back and look one, two, one, one, coordinate with Mid-Atlantic to compile existing. So I guess the point isn't just to compile, but also to share, right? Um, compile existing research on the Mid-Atlantic court portal. Any thoughts on this one? Nope, well, seems like another kind of easy. Let's gather it and share it, okay? Hearing nothing, let's move on to the next one. One, two, one, two. Promote consumer debris research, citizen science, shoreline surveys, monitoring, and stormwater data. Um, any thoughts there? Oh, we might want to add the University of Toledo has just developed a mo monitoring protocol for sea bins. And um, we've got some uh, indication that EPA might help place some sea bins, which are for marinas and such to collect debris. So I guess we could add, um, gather monitoring data from sea bins and other removal devices. Um, Tom, I don't know if you want to comment on monitoring debris from stormwater. Um, well, I'm, I apologize for having to step out of the meeting. So I just rejoined a second ago. Um, Maybe I should listen for a bit. Okay, okay. sorry to put you on this. You don't want to get me started, and and uh, okay. <laughs> but we do have data. We do say in this one stormwater data, um, so that can be broadly interpreted for any band alongs or other yeah. removals that we have over the next five years. Yeah. So any comments on this one? Katie, if you're adding sea bins, um, Ocean Conservancy might be able to contribute to this one as well. We're going to be building a route in our app for data collection specifically from trash capture devices in the coming months. Um, working with, we know University of Toledo, but um, actually University of Toronto Trash Lab, they have a number of bins in the Great Lakes region and they have a protocol as well. So we're going to hopefully make a digital option for all the, the paper um, hard copy options as well. Yeah. I meant um, Toronto, not Toledo, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so um, is that CBIN specific or is it other? So they have a protocol that's for the CBINs because that's what they use, but they're going to test the protocol on other trash capture devices in the coming months. And for CleanSwell, we're gonna just have it be a broad trash capture devices because we just, we know that CBINs don't work for everyone. Um, and yeah, we wanna keep it as universal as possible. Okay, great. Other comments on this one? I, I'll just make one more comment. I, I may have mentioned before, maybe it was just to you, Katie, that uh, I'm involved with, with uh, Trash Free Waters Program at EPA and some folks from the National Municipal Stormwater Alliance, NAMSA, um, as well as some work with ASTM and some other things. But there, um, there are a number of things going on um, sort of in the industry, if you will, about um, performance monitoring for trash capture devices. A lot of it's coming out of California. And in California, I, I feel like California is sort of leading the way here uh, in many respects. Um, I am also, by the way, in a similar uh, effort with California's marine debris program, um, Ocean Protection Council out there. 
so anyway, I, that, that'll be one thing I'll be gathering a lot of information on uh, as we move forward, uh, what ASTM is doing, what this, this group, this um, workshop um, that will be, um, the series of workshops that the Trash Free Waters Program is putting together with us. And so there'll be more, more to come there. Um, by the way, there is a there is a survey. If I could just change the topic very quickly, there's a survey that we're trying to send out to public works folks. Uh, if anybody related to needs and and sort of the the, the sort of the state of the of the public works perspective on aquatic litter and marine debris, if anyone is interested in participating in that survey, uh, just reach out to me and I'll I'll send you a copy of it. Well, Tom, we could share that with all the people who attended the stormwater and litter workshops for the last three years. It's over oh, 170 be, people. Um, that'd be great. That would be great. I, I was, I'm kind of representing SWANA, the Solid Waste Association of North America. And, you know, to be frankly honest, they haven't really been very responsive here. I just, maybe they don't want to be involved in this. I'm not sure, but it, yeah, that'd be great. So Katie, I'll, I'll reach out to you after this meeting and we can figure out how to do that. Yeah, happy to help, happy to okay. help. That's what Great. networks are for. Yeah, absolutely, thank <laughs> you. Any other thoughts on this? It sounds like we should leave it in, that we've got lots of partners listed here. Performance metrics, we might have to come back to in the interest of time. Um, okay, then 1213 is analyzing ecological and economic impacts of litter, tourism, property values, et cetera. Um, this was in the last plan, um, but nobody took the lead on it. Um, actually, Christina Trapani and I tried to get some numbers and found that some municipalities are not um, either keeping the data or willing to share the data on what their taxpayer dollars are spending on, on pickups. Any thoughts? Is this important? Should we leave it in? Um, I, I really like this one, but uh, would have the figure we'd run into the same problems that you and Christine already ran into that could make it difficult. Um, I also don't know if we have the, the bandwidth to hop on it all. So I would have to check before I could uh, say anything concrete. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, do let us know if. Uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's Laura. I really like this one too, because I feel like if we had these economic figures that would be really compelling to local governments and state legislature. Um, and I wonder if, um, you know, we, we've had some success in other arenas of environmental work with the economists at George Mason. Um, and I wonder if some of those economists might be able to help us figure out how to do this. Um, it's something we could at least look into. Um, they may feel they don't have the expertise either, but they didn't have any expertise in, um, in working on the, the value of conserved lands to local government revenues. And that didn't matter. They delved into it and they did some amazing work for us that really has, has proven very useful. So I wonder if you know, they might have some way of going at it that we haven't thought of, but it's it's worth a conversation. I'd be happy to talk to those guys. Um, I think it's great. See if they <laughs> I feel like they could do anything along these lines. Right. Okay. So I added that to our notes. Uh, also, California did an economic impact of litter on like one beach, and it was enormous. Um, the amount of right dollars that are lost because of a trash beach. So. Um, Yes, I'll, I'll leave it in. We'll see if we can get uh, some partners to commit to putting some time to keep this moving forward. But yes, dollar assessments talk to public. Philadelphia yeah. just did, uh, an assessment as well. I'll see if I can find it for us real quick. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the first part of that, Zach? Philadelphia just released a uh, financial impact of litter in the city as well. I'll, I'll see if I can find the report mm -hmm. real quick. Great, thank you. I was going to mention that too. Uh, uh, um, I forget the fellow's name who just recently left uh, City of Philadelphia, um, 
but in any case, the other one I wanted to mention, and I know Christy and some of the others that are on here are involved in the Mid-Atlantic uh, Marine Debris Program and Waterfront Partnership of Baltimore, I think has also done some studies. I know they're not in involved in our team, but I'll see if I can't dig some stuff up on that. Um, for well, the great. Baltimore Harbor, you know, related tourism impact. Excellent. Yeah, if we could see somebody else's and, protocol, we could maybe just right. replicate it. Yeah. Yeah. And Katie, I just wanted to mention here and remind folks on the call too that under our, our CZM five year strategy, we are going to have a little bit of money and it's not much available for small grants. And um, Jim, you did some nice work for us for not very much money on conserved land economic value. And this might be something if, if folks thought that was a good one to go after where we could, um, you know, look at using some of that. CZM grant strategy money to try to begin to address this. Yeah, excellent point. Okay. Um, so I'll just put possible museum funding. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go a little faster. By the way, um, I know a lot of you have a hard stop right now at 1130. Those of you who can stay on, please, please do so. Um, we'll get through the rest of these. Uh, I think we're we're within striking distance of being done in 10 minutes. So please stay with us if you can uh, and use the chat box for any thoughts. Okay, so the next objective is social, sci uh, social science research on consumer debris. And the first one, this is a new action that was not in any previous plan. Conduct a public opinion survey to learn how the public responds to marine debris related terms like plastic pollution versus marine litter versus marine debris and also learn the level of public support for state and local laws and policies to reduce marine debris and litter. Uh, I've already spoken with uh, Opinion Works. We're really excited about getting these hard numbers, hopefully because it will help politicians and policy makers see the level of concern any thoughts on that? And that will be led by Clean Virginia Waterways and Opinion Works. All right. And uh, we'll, once we have the questionnaire together, uh, the survey questions together, we'll run it by everyone to make sure that we get as much information as we can. Katie? Yes. Th this is Virginia. I, I actually have um, some questions or comments about how the objective is actually written. And maybe, I don't know if we want to take the time with that now, but I could talk to you. Yeah. Um, um, to fine tune it? Yeah, because it the way it's coming across to me is we're actually um, con researching the effects of, of, um, of implemented campaigns, and that's already part of a campaign um, that's already needs to be done as part of a campaign strategy, the evaluation and effectiveness. Let the need um, to be part of with that because part of this is to say who else has done something? Uh, yes, so okay, let's wordsmith that, uh, just the two of us, uh, but I see your point, yep. Okay. Um, then we also have, yeah, here we go. Analyzing the effectiveness of community-based social marketing techniques. I guess your comment would be the same, Virginia, that we need to wordsmith that to say, we're not gonna be analyzing other people's programs so much as seeing what's transferable, what's workable. But look at all the parts. Exactly. Look at all the parts yep. Mid-Atlantic group got on that one, so. All right. So yeah, I think the intent is the transferability. So I think it's just um, wordsmithing a bit. Okay. And Christy Kehoe, you, if you're still on the line, that might impact the, the Mid-Atlantic plan <laughs> if we wordsmith this. Okay. Uh, let's get into proper disposal. Um, this is, this objective is to increase proper disposal interception that is mostly stormwater or in stream uh, interception of debris and disposal options. This has uh, three, no, it's got many actions actually. So I'm not sure how much time we're gonna have to get through all of these. Um, how would people like to progress on this in the knowing 
that we've got limited time. Um, one option is the few of us that are really into this could have another conference later this week. I don't know. What are people's thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm sorry we are running short of time, but all the conversation has been so good. But I think the, maybe the one strategy that's left that it would be great if we can get to it is the policy and management one and maybe removal and um, uh, uh, interception could be kind of done offline if people could just add to the comment or send Katie an email what they think about this. Right. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Um, if any of you want a one-on-one -on -one interview with me, I'm pretty much open in the afternoons this week and next week uh, where we could go through this in some detail. I think some of these need to be combined. You know, they're, they're similar enough. So why don't we uh, put that aside and removal is mostly about more cleanups and sharing the results of the cleanups. So let's get to the policy. Mm -hmm. um, so the policy is through statewide partners work with the state legislature to pass legislation that enables local governments to implement new and innovative ways. Um, also here is building awareness of existing policies so that local governments can implement whatever it is they're allowed to. Um, and all of this, again, focused on consumer degree. Um, so what we have here are just a few actions. We've got engage with local county and state elected officials and policymakers to increase awareness on the need for policies. And you see that we had Clean Fairfax, Litter Free Virginia and the Virginia Aquarium who have already been working on this, sign up to assist. Any thoughts or comments on that? I guess the metric would be the, the passing of new laws, I mean, implementation of new laws. Any comments? Maybe we can count the polystyrene <laughs> one this year. Yes, we certainly we can count those that are passed this session 2020 and the new um, balloon release one as well. So that actually We've already got five one one focused on elected officials on the state level. One five one two focuses on local, on the on the community level. And this one is specifically to assist local governments implement a fee on single use plastic bags, which legally they are now allowed to do, but nobody has yet, uh, no county or municipality has implemented that. So this is a new action. Any thoughts or comments on that? We can be a partner on that. Okay, uh, would that be Clean Fairfax and Litter Free Virginia? Yeah, we can put both up. Okay, thank you. Virginia Aquarium, or is this something that you would be able to assist with on a local level to work, even if it's just Virginia Beach? You know, it doesn't have to be like every local government. Yeah, Lynn Haven River now. Okay. You know, Virginia Coastal Alliance probably as well as all on all of these. Okay. Okay. Katie, I just want to reinforce because um, the plan is funded under. Section 309 of the Coastal Zone Act, and we do have to come up with new enforceable policies, that that's really what this money is supposed to be spent toward. The local policies are really helpful because those are ones that you all can go ahead and do. And I, we've got a little bit of a, a glitch within CZM, being within state government, that we have to be careful not to you know, just come up with new laws. There's a whole internal state process for for um, doing that. And, um, you know, it's got to come out of the governor's office and the secretary's office. So we got to run everything up through that hierarchy. Um, so anything we can do at the local level counts as an enforceable policy um, under this funding mechanism. So we're really appreciative of the things we can do there. Important, yeah. Often too, if there's enough local policies, the, on the, the state level starts to look at it and say, oh, should we do a state you know, a level playing mm -hmm. field law. Okay. 
So mm -hmm. under policy, the first one was elected state level, second one was a local, and then 1513 is increased enforcement of current laws. Thoughts on this one or uh, partners mm -hmm. aren't willing to work on this, increased enforcement. We can uh, be a, a partner for Clean Fairfax and Litter Free Virginia. You can, you said? Yep. Okay, thank you. Vacay, do you get involved with uh, enforcement issues? Uh, <clears throat> no, um, I, I, I would take Vacay off of that for the moment. Okay. All right. I know that there's some other people uh, who will probably add themselves to this. Uh, there's some groups in Roanoke who are working on this, but. Yeah, this, this is a good example of where there's a lot of, where, you know, this happens in any good plan. There's, there's overlap, you know, with other, um, with other objectives and strategies and actions. Um, you know, while we're not directly involved with enforcement, data collection is critical to enforcement often because you have to make the people aware of the problem before they know that you have to, you know, that there's an enforcement need. And um, so there's a, there's a, there's some overlap here. I mean, I guess we all know that, so. Excellent point. In fact, some places earlier in the plan, I, we do have language that says, uh, this is in order to influence policymakers. Um, yes, great, great, okay. Katie, I wonder if we should add um, Department of Wildlife Resources, since I believe they're the ones who have to enforce the new balloon law. Is that right? I don't know that they have to enforce it. They do get the no. funds from yeah. it. Oh, who's who? Well, who was any, that? Was my question. Any 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 law enforcement officer can enforce it. So oh, okay. This is, I, this is the way I understand it. The DWR, the fund, if there's any funds collected from it, the DWR, there's a place within DWR that those funds will go. Right. So maybe they'd be a partner just because they have financial gains <laughs> to be had from <laughs> good yeah, enforcement. My, <laughs> yeah, my, my answer to that was to everybody was don't expect there to be a windfall of, of money coming from yeah. something like this. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's a good point that we should probably engage law enforcement in the discussion. Okay. Yeah. It, and then the, yeah. the next action, uh, 1514, is inform the development of at least five new local and state policies and management plans that are aimed at source reduction. This again is from the Mid-Atlantic plan. What I personally liked about this was the local, like can this Virginia marine debris reduction plan endorse the idea that more local um, governments should have litter prevention plans in place. Um, we've worked a little bit with Fairfax and some other counties to look at having basically a mini Virginia marine debris reduction plan, but focus locally. Uh, so I'll open this up for discussion. Your thoughts on this? This is Corey. Oh, go ahead, Seth. You got it, Corey. I'll wait. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just going to say we, uh, NVRC worked with um, Fairfax County and, and um, Clean Fairfax Council um, a about two years ago on the Little Hunting Creek project and uh, one of the recommendations that came out of that project was kind of looking at you know how we can look at the county code to determine how it can be strengthened to, to better clarify the difference between illegal dumping and litter and, and work with maybe the county police on how to better enforce illegal dumping and, and what the difference between illegal dumping and litter is. Um, so we don't have any authority to enforce any laws or create any new policies, but I'm happy to, you know, continue working on that subject. That is so super that you brought that up because it just occurred to me, the term illegal dumping is nowhere in this document and it sure should be because it is a different source as opposed to, you know, litter out the car window or something. Yeah, litter, litter and illegal dumping are two completely different things and they're handled in very different ways. And, and a lot of times illegal dumping is, you know, with, has to do not with stormwater so much as the um, solid waste um, folks. So 
um, it's that requires people to cross pollinate with each other from different agent or different um, departments within county government. Um, mm -hmm. And also with dumpster, I don't know if you talk about dumpster infrastructure and, and haulers and, and stuff like that, but um, that might be one other factor or action to put in to Good point. Excellent. Try to get try to get um, information about you know the the role of um, dumpster haulers, trucks. Um, you know how um, dumpster housekeeping can be better um, enforced, or how it can be um, made easier. What are some some barriers to dumpster housekeeping? Um, uh, what we found was that a lot of multifamily housing had um, significant barriers for people to actually use their dumpsters um, because they were full most of the time uh, or they didn't know which ones were for trash and which ones for recycling or what to put in what what to put in which dumpster and it, it, um, so there's a whole nother um, aspect to this that is related to dumpsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is great, Corey. This is wonderful. Uh, and the covered load issue with, with trucks, not just trash trucks, but any truck. Mm -hmm. um, good point. So we uh, are currently working on uh, heading a litter task force for Fairfax County. Um, and we are providing them with um, more than five options on some local actions that they can take um, through code changes and ordinance changes, things like um, mandating the use of trash cans so trash can't be left out in bags overnight, um, a minimum dumpster requirement for uh, multi-family residences. So it's either more dumpsters or more fre frequent trash pickup um, dumpster corrals, all uh, those kind of things that the finding policies that Fairfax County can implement without being impacted by the Dillon rule. Excellent. When will that report be done? <laughs> Do you know? um, so we're hoping to uh, present it to the Board of Supervisors by May. All right, that's excellent. That might be a nice uh, prototype or document that could uh, be transferable, hopefully. That's what we're hoping. Excellent. Any other topics? Uh, this is fantastic conversation. Also commercial dumpsters um, sometimes are um, a, an issue that like shopping centers and stuff like that. So mm. they frequently get um, used by um, Ill, people that are d using them illegally. Yeah, oh yeah, that is a huge issue. Even at state parks, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. One of the, the issues we've looked at um, more so towards illegal dumping and illegally using commercial dumpsters is creating more access to places for people to throw away bulk trash. The ability of a, a person to pay to get rid of an old soiled mattress or an old couch shouldn't be the reason they are not able to dispose of the item efficiently or, or properly. Good point. Wow, this is like a whole new world. <laughs> um, that and, and one thing that we you got to point out is is that you have to look at these things through kind of an equity lens, also, um, to avoid, you know, targeting certain demographics. Agreed. That's a big one.
And I mean, th this is all super important too, but we need to always, in terms of prioritizing efforts under the marine debris plan, we should be thinking too, like how big a source are, <laughs> are some of those things in terms of becoming marine debris. Um, they're obviously very important at the local level and on the land, but um, we do need to, sorry, <laughs> keep the marine debris aspect in mind too. I don't know, Mark, are you seeing mattresses out there or <laughs> big stuff like that causing impacts? Mark's on mute. <laughs> not, not usually, not that kind of thing. I mean, yeah. you know, if it's a large, if it's something large, it's usually, you know, usually marine industry related or marine recreation related. It's not usually mattresses. <laughs> yeah. Well, you bring up a good point that, um, yes, of course, litter becomes marine debris. Oops, did Katie freeze or is it just me? Okay. Uh, back. Oh, here she comes. Okay. Are we losing you, Katie? I don't know. Oh, you're back, I think. Your, at least your voice, your face is still frozen. Yeah, I think I lost it. Oh dear. Yep, <laughs> we lost Katie. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Are you back, Katie? You're on mute. Thank you. Um, Scott, <laughs> all, I encourage you to use the chat box right now if you have any other thoughts. Uh, we will send a clean up back to everybody before we, uh, out to the larger public for their comments. Uh, any closing comments? We get kicked off again. We keep losing Katie. <laughs> well, I'll just hop in. I, I think she was just trying to wrap us up and. Um, probably just reminding us to send any more comments we have to her and that you know she'll be updating this and can send it back out. Um, are you there, Katie? I am. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> are we all set then? I think we are, unless anybody has something they want to say. All good. Thanks. Other than thanks for, this, thanks for really pulling together. Call. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Really Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.